Welcome to volume 29. These are five points a day instead of questions, uh, which will help you ASPMB 2021 exams. Now, these five points are actually based on the famous book. Well, I tend to call it famous because to a certain extent it has become famous. And uh, since it's written by me, I have to say it is the most famous. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, but it has been very well received and it's available on all Amazon sites. Ninja Notes is basically uh, containing all the notes, every conceivable note that will be needed to not only pass PMP exams based on 2021, but to be able to ace it. Now it's available in paperback as well as Kindle version, and it's completely colored. It's full color. So it's also interesting as well as extremely informative. Get your copy now. And let's at least look at the five notes from these Ninja Notes. Point number one. RBS, Risk Breakdown Structure. Now, for some reason, this part has been explained pretty badly by many of the books and including trainers. Now, what is an RBS? See, when you have this uh, process called plan risk management, right? So when you have a risk management plan, which is an output of a process called plan risk management, it does not identify risks, but what it does, it actually finds out the major categories of risks which are applicable to this particular project. So for example, uh, this is taken from my project, a very, very old historic project. We call it Expand Solarix. And in this project, this is just a few of them. Uh, some of the categories which are applicable to my project were requirements and analysis, environmental, financial, management, and there were quite a few more. We had actually broken down a little bit, but within requirements and analysis, some of them would be connected to terminology, the language, domain, stuff like that. Uh, all of these have been broken down. Now, none of these are individual activities uh, or individual risk. These are not. What was going to happen is once you find out the RBS, which is nothing but the uh, categories of risks applicable to your project, then later on in the next process where you identify risk, you will simply catch hold of any one of these uh, categories and find all the risks connected to this particular category. Then you move to the next one. Find all risks connected to this category. Then you move to the next one. Because of this, neither you miss any category nor you unnecessarily identify things which are not relatable to your project. So that is why you create an RBS. RBS is an input to the process called identify risk. This is what we need to break it down into individual risk, very similar to the way the WBS is uh, uh, taken in identification of all possible activities. In define activities, you have the WBS, right? The WBS just tells us what are the work packages, and then those work packages are broken down into activities. The same way in risk management, we have the RBS, which tells us the major categories of risk. And later on in identify risk, we break them down into individual risks. All right, let's move on to point number two. Prompt list is another thing for some reason, many candidates just don't get it. Uh, fortunate, unfortunately, there are a lot of books and trainers, particularly on Udemy. Well, what can be said about them? Anyway, so when we talk about prompt list, one of them is VUCA. But before I talk about VUCA, let me go back. What is a prompt list? Prompt list is basically, uh, you know, certain industries have some ready-made uh, categories of risks. I was working in a company and where no matter what we did, it was a manufacturing company and uh, uh, heavy industry, heavy engineering. And no matter what we did, the first thing that my managers would do and my team members would do is, sir, let's do 4M, 4M, man, machine, material, method. That means for each of the work that we wanted to do, any new initiative, we had to at least identify the risks connected to man, machine, material, and method. And of course, we could add more categories. So that was 4M was a prompt list in that particular industry. Now, depending on the kind of industry, you have different prompt lists. These are ready-made categories of risks, which would then be used to identify individual categories. And therefore, you will find prompt list as a tool and technique of only one process, and that is identify risk. 
Out of the 49 processes, prompt list is available only in one of them, and that is identify risk. Got it? The same reason why RBS is brought into uh, uh, identify risk, the same reason we use prompt list. Now, in those uh, digital organization organizations which are into AI, things which are susceptible to a lot of uh, new age technology, they use something known as VUCA. That's why in many of these industries, you'll find many of these companies, people will say, this is a VUCA world. VUCA means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Now, what kind of questions can they show up in PMP exam? Only of two kinds. One is, they'll either tell you what is, they'll just show VUCA and say, what is the correct uh, full form of VUCA? So you have to choose the right one from the options provided. The other one is that they will write in the question that which of the following it is an example of a prompt list. So one of the options would either have VUCA or 4M or PESEL or TCOP. These are the most popular in the PMP exam. 4M does not show up as much, showed up only once. VUCA by far is the most popular, right? In fact, you can get away by just remembering VUCA. But to be on the safe side, just look at PESEL and TCOP and remember, these are prompt lists. PESEL is political, economical, social, technical, legal, and environmental. Our Indian Army does a lot of PESEL before any kind of movement in the border areas. TCOP, T-E-C-O-P, is equal to technical, environmental, commercial, operational, and political, right? So these are the prompt list ready-made categories of risks. Now, as we move on to point number three, there is another term which is part of the process called qualitative risk analysis. Qualitative risk analysis simply means prioritization of risks. And one of the things over there is called FMEA. Now, earlier on, there were very few questions that will show up in the exams on FMEA. But nowadays, FMEA does feature. So if you see the term FMEA, the full form is failure modes and effects analysis, what is it meant for? Its purpose is to prioritize risk, nothing more, nothing less. But unlike the, uh, you know, probability and impact grid that we are normally using, which uses which which takes care of both uh, threats and opportunities, but FMEA only handles negative risks, that is threats. It does not handle positive risks or opportunities. That is why the name is failure modes and effects and analysis. That means in what ways the project may fail. And then what is the priority? And by doing a priority, of course, it's a pretty big thing, it's a very objective matter of uh, prioritization, but once you've done, you get an RPN. RPN's full form is risk priority number RPN. Once you get an RPN, you all, all have to remember that the higher the RPN, the more critical the risk. Fantastic. Let's move on to point number four. Now, when we talk about risk prioritization, we've already done FMEA. We've, uh, you guys are already aware of the most basic one, which I didn't want to bring it up here because it's so basic. Everybody knows about it, even kids know it. And that is using probability and impact grid to figure out, okay, if it's high impact, high probability, right? So the risk is high priority. But now these are not the only two ways for prioritization. You could also prioritize because of urgency. What does urgency mean? Urgency means that once a risk is identified, how do we how fast do we have to implement the response the urgency of responding to a risk is what we call the urgency factor now every industry would not do that but most of the security agency or uh, organizations which are involved in disaster recovery and relief they actually prioritize most of their risks connected to urgency Right? For them, those things which need urgent response, they would be of highest priority. So urgency is also one of the reasons for risk prioritization, one of the methods of risk prioritization. Another is proximity. Proximity means that if you are, let's say you're doing a project and in the life cycle of the project at any point of time when you are doing risk identification, right, uh, uh, you may or risk prioritization for that matter, 
you would realize that, that certain risks will happen sooner in the life cycle of project and some of them would happen a little later in the life cycle of the project. The sooner they happen in the life cycle of the project, they are called proximix risks. That means they have they are closer to you in proximity. That risk which are going to happen sooner in the life cycle of the project will simply be taken or treated as high priority because of their proximity to where you are in the project. So that is called proximity. Proximity simply means how close somebody is to you or something is to you, right? Then you have the strategic impact. I don't think I have to even explain it to you. Any risk which has a not only the project related effect, it affects the strategy of the organization work, well, you will automatically treat it as a high priority. But the one that most of the people don't get it is called propinquity. Now, I know the name is uh, quite interesting, propinquity. It's basically a perceived significance of a risk by a very important stakeholder. What you should not miss is somebody very important in the project finds certain risk very close to their heart. By simply saying that, you may not have even identified that risk or it may have been a low priority to you, but since an important stakeholder like the sponsor, like the, uh, let's say the business owner, or let's say the uh, government organization or your customer, they simply say, hey, this risk is very close to me. You need to watch it. You will have to automatically put it up as a high priority risk. It's as simple as that, right? So that is called propinquity. All right, so now let's move on to the very last point, and that is point number five. This is called sensitivity analysis. Now, this particular uh, tool and technique, which is also called the tornado diagram, why is it called the tornado diagram? Well, just look at it. The way, you know, the highest sensitivity risks are written at the top or, you know, displayed at the top with the least sensitive at the bottom, it actually starts looking like the funnel of a twister the funnel of a tornado. And that's the reason why it's called a tornado diagram. But having all the, you know, the visual appeal aside, let's talk about the sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity means that when a risk happens, like a high priority risk, if a risk happens, then would it happen alone or would it also actually you know, trigger other, project, uh, other risks? And the risk that can trigger other risks are called highly sensitive. And therefore, this particular tool and technique, which is called tornado diagram, can be found in the process of quantitative risk analysis. See, quantification of the risk is not identification or prioritization. It simply means further analysis of the high priority risk which are identified or you know labeled so or prioritized so in the process called qualitative risk analysis. So you take the high priority risk from the process called qualitative risk analysis and then you do further analysis on them to do better decision making. That is called quantitative. And one of the prominent tool and techniques which shows up in PMP exams again and again is tornado diagram. Now, what kind of questions show up here? Only two. Either they'll simply ask you, how do you measure the sensitivity of a risk? The answer is tornado diagram. Or the other way around, they'll simply ask, what is the purpose of a tornado diagram? And the answer is to identify the sensitivity of a risk. Simple. Got it? And you're done. So this brings us to the end of this specific video. My request to you is do subscribe so that you make sure that you don't miss out anything. Do press the notification button. And if you like this, please press the thumbs up mark because it does wonders with the uh, algorithm of YouTube and it then presents it to more people. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, any ideas, please put it in the comment section. I would be more than happy to interact with you, clear your doubts, whatsoever they are. I love doing it. I've been helping people. Uh, I've, I've got 28,600 uh, more, uh, more than that, certified PMPs to my personal credit, right? So I like doing that, so don't worry about it. And yes, as PM Pulse, we do not subscribe to the idea of paid promotions. We simply depend on good people like you to share it with others. So please go ahead and take a little bit of an extra effort from your side and share it to more people. Thank you in advance for doing so and the very best of luck for your PMP exams.